Hello, welcome. I'm Steve. <laughs> there I am. Um, wanted to create this little video because the professor of your course has decided to use a, a technology called Peer Scholar. Uh, and I'm here to kind of give you a sense of, of what this technology is all about and how it works. So let me jump right in. Um, you know, if, if we could, I, I bet we all wished we could play a musical instrument or, or maybe a lot of musical instruments. Or, you know, maybe martial arts. It would be great if we could learn two or three different martial arts, right? Or, or maybe we'd love to be a great dancer um, and we could learn different styles. There's lots of different styles of dances and we could be great at all of these things. Why don't we do this? You know, these are all things that would be fun and that we would value. What is stopping us from, from doing all of these things? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> What's stopping us is that these are skills and it's hard work to learn skills. Or to be a little more specific, the only way to get better at any skill is through repeated structured practice. You have to engage that skill. You have to use that skill. And we always begin by being no good. So that's part of the problem. We often feel a little self-conscious in the beginning when our skill isn't very good. Uh, but we also have to put the time and effort into using these skills regularly. If we do, there's a big payoff. Uh, the more we use a skill, the more fluent it becomes and the more natural it becomes. It becomes part of who we are. Uh, and so there is a real benefit to skill learning, but it's also hard work. Um, so how can you make it easier? Well, if you learn a skill in a context that provides this sort of structure, and in the context where you get some feedback, then it's a little more motivating, a little more interesting, and especially if you see the value of what you're doing. So Peer Scholar is in fact a tool we developed to help you develop what we could call the skills of success. Um, sure, you could be a successful dancer or martial artist or guitar player, uh, but we're going to talk about slightly different skills here, uh, more geeky academic skills like thinking skills, critical and creative thought, interaction skills like being able to communicate well with others, both expressively and receptively, uh, and to be able to collaborate well with others, and also self-knowledge skills, knowing your own strengths and weaknesses, um, and have maybe even how you respond in certain situations. These are things that psychologists call metacognition or metacognitive skills, knowing about ourselves. Um, and of course, there's also, in many cases, hands-on skills, depending on the program you're in. Um, if you're in a trade or if you're in a nursing program or something like that, there are real practical skills you also have to learn. Why do we call these the skills of success? Well, you guys all live in a world that is dynamically changing, and when you graduate from university, some of the jobs that exist today won't even exist then. And in fact, there will be some brand new jobs that will exist then uh, in virtually every job setting. And in fact, in virtually every life setting, if you have uh, well-developed skills of the sort I've got on, on the screen here, you will do well. Um, these thinking skills allow you to solve problems and every employer loves employees who can solve problems. The interaction skills allow you to work with others typically to solve a problem. And so those collaboration and communication skills are critical. Self-knowledge is the key to learning, to know what you're not good at. That can guide you to actually improve at that thing. Um, and of course, hands-on skills are often just critical. So Pure Scholar was developed to help you develop these skills, which means to give you repeated structured practice using these skills. As you use them, they will become more fluent, they will become more natural. So how does it do this? Well, every Peer Scholar activity is going to have three phases, what we call create, assess, and reflect. In the create phase, your professor will simply give you some task. They will ask you to produce a composition of some sort, and it could be a written composition, uh, but it could also be creating a video or creating an image. Um, if we're talking about a hands-on skill, they may actually ask you to videotape yourself performing the skill, for example, uh, and submit that. But at some point, you'll have to submit something um, like you normally do. But things will get a little different in the next two phases, because these phases 
are where you're going to get that repeated structured practice. So specifically, in the assess phase, you're actually going to sort of play the role of the teacher. You're going to see some of the compositions that your classmates submitted. They will be randomly selected, they will pr be presented anonymously, and your task will be to follow the specific instructions that your faculty member gives you, um, but, but in a general sense, you are going to give feedback to each of your peers to try to help them improve their work. Uh, while you're doing that to a bunch of peers and engaging critical thought and creative thought and communication over and over and over, um, peers will be doing the same to your piece of work. So in the third step, you're going to see this feedback that your peers gave you, and you're going to be prompted to analyze that feedback. Once again, engaging all of these skills that we've been talking about, making them stronger as you do. This is going to be a bit of work, but I think you'll find it's very interesting work. First of all, just getting to see the work of your peers will give you a really strong sense of where your work fits. Metacognition. Um, and Literally, when you get this feedback from your peers, that will give you a good sense of, of directions you can follow to make your work better in the future. Depending on how your professor has set up the activity, you may even have the opportunity to use that feedback immediately to improve your work uh, before the professor even sees it, for example. Um, so that's you know really what we're trying to do in these last two phases is, is really engage your mind give you an interesting kind of cool task to do but but engage critical thinking creative thinking communication etc and build those skills stronger and stronger okay so I want to get a little more specific but it's a little tricky to get too specific how do you actually launch your your peer scholar activity that will depend on the learning management system that, that your university is using. And so um, it should be relatively intuitive, though. There should be just something called Peer Scholar or something like that that you click uh, that will bring you into the system. Uh, your instructor should be able to give you uh, clearer instructions about how to actually get into Peer Scholar. Once you get in, uh, what you'll see, again, will depend on how your instructor has set up the activity. Uh, but what really you have to know, I think we can capture here. So this is an image of the assess phase. So remember, first you would compose, but this is the phase where you actually see the work of your peers and assess the work and give them feedback. Um, and so just a few things I wanna note right away. First of all, see this thing over here, activity instructions, you can click on that anytime. The first time you go into a phase, it will be open automatically. And so you'll have to click to close it. Uh, but the rest of the time it'll be sitting over here and if you ever want to remind yourself of of the instructions of what you need to do in this phase you can click on that and and see those instructions uh right away um, that was my dog lola barking in the background uh, in case you heard that uh, but then generally what you do is see the this area on the top think of this as your sort of steps that you have to proceed to and this, the specific steps may be different depending on different activities. Uh, so you may not see everything that, that's here, but you certainly will see the submit at the end and essentially you work your way across. And so in this case, what we would be doing is first looking at peer one and we'd be giving them feedback and, and we'll do that by actually noting some things directly on their work so you can select some of their text and apply feedback. Uh, but there's also a, a set of questions over here that your faculty member has prepared and you will have to fill out this form. Think of this as like a little form that you fill out for peer one. Uh, and so once you're done that, you save and you go to peer two and you do it again. Peer three, you do it again, etc. You may see your work on the end. There may be what's called a self-assessment step. There may not. There may be a couple of additional things to do after you do all this. Um, and so, you know, once you've done all this, click on this questions. If it exists, it may not. Um, and then once you've done everything across the top, don't forget to click the submit button. Uh, and, and please, this, that's sort of an important point. Um, you really, in, in order for your work to be considered done, completed, uh, we want you to click that submit button and say, yeah, I am done. Uh, and so make sure that the last thing you do in every phase before the due date is click that submit button. 
you know, and really that's it. If you pay attention to the instructions and you work your way across left to right, um, you, you should find everything very easy and very intuitive. If you do run into issues at all, see this little uh, question mark down here. You can click on that. That'll give you access to um, some help files, but also will allow you, if, if you've got a real problem, to connect directly with us. You know, rather than emailing your professor, you can connect directly with us, um, and we can help with any issue or problem you may have. Okay, but that's the basic flow. Each phase, it'll be pretty obvious, you know, phase will be active, it'll be green, and once you click into it, you'll see an interface, and then just follow what I said here. Okay, and that should that should get you going. So we really hope you enjoy your, your activity. We hope you enjoy the Peer Scholar uh, experience. And you know, we, we, the goal that we have is really to build up these skills um, within you so that when you are outside of our university and, and you're out there you know, doing your thing, uh, trying to be successful in life, that the experience you've had with Peer Scholar will put you in a better position for success, um, that, that you literally will think critically and creatively and communicate well, all in a more natural way. So let us, the whole team, say we wish you uh, the best of success in your career and in your life, and we hope you enjoy the process that we've created to, to help you get there. Alrighty, have a great activity. Bye-bye, guys.